name is Brian Cho. I'm the Centre Manager for Uga Chaga. Um, Uga Chaga is actually a counselling and support agency in Singapore that is actually for the gay and lesbian community. Yeah, if you're talking about our clientele, um, we, our, our, our clients has a wide age range. Um, but we do not serve clients that is under the age of 18. So uh, um, for the men, for the male clients that we have, we actually have males that's come, that, that could be as young as 18 or as old as um, 70 years old. But on the average, our client age are in their 30s. So does it include also um, parents of LGBT? Uh, Yes, actually. Um, we also have parents who, who are seeking help to sort of get used to, uh, to, their, to their children's sexuality or if they are concerned about their children's sexuality, they also come to us for help. Uh, we do occasionally have clients who's, who come together with their parents uh, to talk about their sexuality issues. What are the places for LGBT couples to face, go through counselling together, I assume? Uh, yes, Uga Chaga is actually a safe space for people who need to seek couple counselling. Uh, primarily because very few uh, another social service provider know much about gay and lesbian issues. So if, you, if a gay couple or a lesbian couple go to those so, social service centres, then might, um, the, the, the counsellors or the social workers might not be uh, well equipped to attend to them. And in a way, they feel safer to talk about their issues with our counsellors here. Um, even if our counsellors are not gay or lesbian themselves, some of our counsellors are actually uh, heterosexual women. You mentioned that he's forty in his forties now. That's right. Yeah. So is it is there a shift in the kind of society attitude towards the gay issue? The people of the younger generation face similar conflicts in general. Um. I, I I don't I, I do not understand the for those in their forties or fifties a lot. Uh, we don't have enough understanding of that. Uh, in fact, we are starting on a, a new uh, project with direction to serve the uh, gay men and the bisexual men in their forties and above. But my understanding of the younger generation, especially those below the age of say twenty five, um, most youth see sexuality as a non-issue. In fact, most of the younger gay and lesbian people, they, uh, they, they tend to hang up with heterosexual fan, friends. Um, but I, my discussion with some of, these, some of the friends that I have is, we do not know whether they are accepting of another gay person, or they are simply indifferent to things around them. Um, my guess is there are people who are both. Uh, there are people who are truly accepting of a person, another friend who is different from them in terms of the sexual orientation. But there are also people who are just uninterested in things around them. So when they say it doesn't matter to them, it might, it might also mean that everything else didn't matter to them. In terms of um, Uga Chaga as an LGBT organization, what are the kind of um, response you got from maybe from the government side? Um, how about in terms of like, mm. do they support in terms of funding, or do they post any objections? Well, the the interesting thing about us is we have existed for the past ten years, and for the past five years, obviously we are a lot more active. Um, it's not we have never started off as an underground organization, uh, but of course the the fact that internet use is uh, more widespread in Singapore help us to. Uh, promote our service easier. Um, they have no backlash, neither there are any form of support from the government. Uh, I think the government is uh, taking a, uh, a neutral stand of our existence. And if I'm a government official, I think that, that I should be quite quite glad that there's an organization that decides to look after the welfare of their own community, which the government um, can never actually uh, take a direct uh, stand on it.
Um, having said that, we, we, when we organize workshop or when we do certain, certain uh, events, there are some times we actually have to get some permit. Uh, take for example, I, when I had uh, when I organized a sexual addiction workshop that was in October this year. We actually had to file for a police permit because this lady whom we invite to speak at the workshop is not local. Um, so we had to file in a, uh, a, a police permit for her to speak. Um, I must say there was no delay in the process even though they, are clearly, they, they, they clearly know what we are doing and what's the whole topic about. Uh, but there's no delay in the permit. It's ra rather your usual government procedures. There's no there's no hiccup. When when we actually when we actually filed the same permit um, earlier this year in January, that was for another workshop. Then she she was again the speaker. Um, even though it was, I actually filed the permit late. They still managed to get it done, but within the three days or four days. So it was um, the sonal no longer because this place was set. Um, but do you feel that there's not enough places or there's no places that for gay LGBT people to a non sexual place or for LGBT people to hang out with and to make friends or a social interaction? Um, it again it depends on population group uh, age group. Um, when I'm working through what I've been doing for the past two years, I realized that we have always seen gay and lesbian community as one. But actually, people are very different from each other. And in terms of age group, um, the younger ones obviously have its own way of interacting. Uh, gay men in their 20s to their 30s and maybe mid 40s, they tend to interact a lot more online. Uh, whether or not it's healthy or it's beneficial, it's up to individual how they use internet as a tool. Um, but gay men in their forties and above, actually, uh, our understanding through one of our recent online feedback is they act, they actually need some physical space for interaction. So, uh, so the needs dif changes uh, in in terms of age group. Um, but for the youth, I I don't I actually don't think that we need a physical space for them to interact because they can do everything uh, online these days. Um, in in organizing workshops and like sexual edition workshops and everything, how does Uga Chaka help them uh, find a solution? Maybe a problem, and then what would the solution provided by Uga Chaka? Um, our our work here um, takes different approach. Now, if we run the if we run the workshop or talks, it's really more to raise the awareness. Uh, for talks, it's really to raise awareness and pass on useful information. Uh, for workshops, we actually allows the participants to interact and um, uh, experience some of the some of the some of the issues that's being discussed. So they they are very different approach. Um, but if when it comes to face to face counseling or hotline counseling or email counseling, um, our approach is to draw the strength of the person who seeks help. Because at the end of the day, the the most dangerous part for for any social service provider is to <coughs> help too much. Um, the idea is to draw the person's strength and find what are the things that the person can use to. To, to overcome their issue, their, his own issues. That is our, our main goal. Um, if you talk to any counsellors, if the counsellors have to see a client for a good 20, 30 sessions and the client still continues to come back, then you're probably not doing a good job. Yeah. Um, just like you mentioned, Go Chang'e not only provide services to mm -hmm. 18 and above, but nowadays kids are getting are coming out earlier and earlier. Mm -hmm. So, um, why do you not uh, Uga Chaka counsel maybe like 13 or 12 year old who was 6 year old? Um, they, actually, the decision is actually made based on the, the legality. Uh, we have decided to keep it 18 and above. 
um, that is you know in our face to face services or our workshops. But if let's say a person who writes in through an email or calls on the phone and if we do not ask the age, we won't know the person's age. Or if the person don't reveal the age um, or lie about the age, we will never know. So that doesn't stop us from reaching out in a way that we hope to. Um, but if let's say if it's a if a, if it's a person who is younger than eighteen years old and he comes in, then uh, we might want to get the parents' involvement. Or in in, in some in some ways, there are schools that uh, school counselor that wrote to us. While we cannot directly help the, 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 the student because of the age, we can actually provide support to the school counsellors so that the, the, the school counsellor can actually um, know how to approach the issues that's been brought up. So this book was actually launched during the Indonesian period, together with the Tong Lake, which is another book. Um, SQ21 is actually a book that uh, carries the faces of real people. Um, some of them, okay, well, let me just flip to one of the page. Um, um, some of them are still very active in the, in the community. Um, the reason why we publish this book is to let uh, local gay and lesbian community to have a book that actually talks about being gay in Singapore. And um, for the first time you actually have real people with their stories and their face published in the book. I think this is a book that uh, that inspired a lot of people and till today there are some there are, there are still people who write to us and say that they have actually had the courage to come out because of this book. Uh, come out it could be coming out to themselves or, or coming out to their family members and because of this book. There are also people who told us that uh, they will buy this copy and then place it in their bookshop and hopefully their, their, their mom or their dad will chance about it and read about this and open, open the opportunity to talk about their sexuality. So this book actually means a lot to a lot of people and it also means a lot to us because it's, I, I suppose this is also a big coming out book for the organisation. Yeah. Um, the other book that we actually published, this was last year, was published last year. Um, it is a Chinese book, Tongli is a Chinese book and for the longest time we actually don't have a Chinese book that was published in Singapore. Um, what we have decided to do in this book is, it, it's, it's a non, it's a fictional book but it's based on real life stories. Um, what, 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 what is different about this book is we decided to find people who are, um, who beats the stereotypes of gay men. Uh, gay man who is of all shapes and sizes, yep. And uh, it is it's, it's about it's also a book about living as a gay person in Singapore. So these these two books is uh, our effort to reach out to people who likes to read a lot. Nation because Nation party that was cancelled. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there was intimation, mm. then there was pink dot. Mm. Um, do you see, um, like, is it, do you feel that there's progress in terms of the gay community pushing for more visibility? And how do you see us progressing into the future? Well, it's, it's a very heartwarming uh, feeling to be even in the pink dot itself. I have uh, participated in in it uh, for the past two years and it's always very heartwarming to see so many people who whether they are straight or whether they are gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender uh, having the courage to come forward to be to be seen uh, never mind if whether the, there will be a TV camera crew around never mind if there's a newspaper reporter or a photojournalist around I think that takes a lot of courage to be seen in the group that it's obviously meant for uh, uh, recognition of uh, gay and lesbian presence in Singapore. Um, there is, there are progress, I think, that, that's right, there, there is progress that we are witnessing over the past few years. Um, of 
course, whenever there's progress, there will also be backlash. Uh, and I see it as a very natural, pro, uh, natural reaction from people who are either misinformed or are very, are very firm on the belief that homosexuality is wrong. I think this is an ongoing negotiation of space. Whether it's a physical space or whether it's online space, this is ongoing negotiation. And to be honest, I, I don't we we should respect those dif those different voices, um, even though they may come across homophobic. But we actually have to hear them out because actually sometimes hearing people who voice homophobic opinion is also a good chance to educate them um, because you. Only by educating this that they probably realize how how warped their views or how strange their opinions are. Because if you talk to most of these homophobic people, their 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 homophobic identity has no grounds. There's no foundation. It's all um, shaped by whatever they hear or say. And I always tell people uh, around us who sometimes face rejection from. Take, take for example rejection from friends, uh, from family members because of who they are. Uh, let's just face it, you take a good 13, 14 years or maybe 20 years to come to terms with your own sexuality. You cannot expect a person to accept who you are within 20 minutes, probably even 20 months. So you need to take time for people to digest what you have just said. Do you, do you see, um, what do you feel about the future in terms of Singapore, mm. uh, in terms of government and also society view on homosexual, uh, on, uh, on the LGBT, of the LGBT community? Do you think there will be a progress in terms of our rights and also mm. in terms of acceptance? Or? I, I think Singapore society is becoming more widely traveled or people read more. Uh, people are going beyond their traditional uh, information channel so people are getting more informed um, the, the influx of foreigners also obviously help to shape some of our opinion um, having said that there will be people who are stuck or firm on their, their own views and sometimes I think to, to challenge or to change those views is, is a complete waste of my time so sometimes I just probably just leave them alone um, there will be, in any society, there will be people who, who are homophobic or who, who continue to believe what they are being informed about. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm an optimistic person, so I do think in the, in the next 10, 20 years, I, I'm quite sure within my lifetime uh, that things will change for much better. So they are, we, we are seeing people who are changing and society will change. And I ask myself, how does 377 a actually impacts uh, the gay and lesbian community? Probably more for gay community. Um, again, we must recognize the gay community is not a homogeneous community. There are people who don't give a damn about 377 a In fact, if you ask some of the youth uh, these days, or rather, if you ask anybody, regards of the age, they probably understand very little about 377 And that's something that I don't think we have done enough. We have not educated our people enough about this piece of uh, law. There are a second group of people who know enough about 377A, feel very victimized by it, and could not cope with the fact that they are being seen as criminal in the eye of laws. So as a social service provider, this actually this is an important part because this impacts a person's uh, psychosocial well-being. Um, these are the two things. But there's also another thing that we hardly actually talk about. is how this 377A um, restrict the heterosexual community in understanding the gay community. Um, we have social service provider, um, media, um, education institutions who, the moment you talk about gay issues, they got freaked out because of this 
this 3778 there. It's very interesting to see that there are, there, are, there are people who are able to differentiate between legal issues and moral issues. And there are people who are prepared. There are, are social service providers who are open enough to get us to train them because they see it as just a legal technical issue. And they're prepared to reach out to people because, because basically they serve with a heart. But there are also people who, um, who are very fearful of uh, backlash because of this. And unfortunately, um, we have, I think this as a society itself, we have been brainwashed to just follow whatever that is being stated in the book.